What's up everyone, John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo with a review of this thin little guy. This is the latest MacBook, the reincarnation of the MacBook. It went away for a while, but it is back thin and clad in aluminum. Uh, we tested the 1.2 gigahertz dual core Intel Core M model, uh, eight gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD uh, with Intel's HD graphics 5300. Uh, configured at 1600 bucks, so not cheap. Uh, so I'm gonna do this review a little bit differently. I'm gonna go through just all the questions I had about the computer, kind of just like a lightning review. So point, 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 all the things you want to know about this, uh, we will talk about. Uh, first, if you're the kind of person that says, I could build a PC for 1600 bucks, I could build a way better computer, this is clearly not aimed uh, at you, this uh, thin little laptop. I'm also gonna end it with a conclusion whether or not I think it's worth it uh, or not worth it. Let's start with the screen. So the 12 inch 2304 by 1440 screen looks damn good. Uh, in fact, it's one of the best screens I've ever seen on a computer. If you're thinking about getting a MacBook Air and after seeing what the Retina looks like on a similar size screen, I would really think twice. And we'll talk a little bit more later uh, about that MacBook Air. So what about the Core M chip that's powering this guy? It's coupled with Intel's HD Graphics 5300. So the question I had was, how weak is it? Uh, so think of this processor as like the guy at the gym who walks up, thinks he can bench 300 pounds, puts it on the bar, picks it up, and then just immediately screams for a spotter because it falls on his chest. That's what this guy is like. Uh, so here's what it can do and what it cannot do. It can 100% play 4K videos in full screen, no issue uh, at all. When connected though to an external UHD monitor, it could not with the lid open or the lid closed. It was just a stuttering mess. Uh, 1080p video though played fine on full screen, whether the laptop was closed, whether I had an external monitor connected, no problem at all um, with 1080p. So that's all you're playing and all you're watching, um, don't worry. I did test it with YouTube and of course it can do all the other streaming stuff you'd want like Netflix and Hulu without any issue. Next question I had was, can it game? And the answer is kinda. I played StarCraft II on default settings with no issues uh, at all. You could play some Arkham City, but if you're getting this computer to be a gaming rig, um, you should not do that. So it can also do some video editing. I tested on Final Cut Pro 10, but hot damn is it slow. Uh, it's a last resort machine. Uh, it took about twice as long as my two-year-old 13-inch MacBook Pro. So yeah, I can do it, uh, but you know, get a cup of coffee, put your feet up, call your mom if you haven't called her in a while, and just wait. We're processing Netflix, YouTube, all the non-intensive things though, it'll work on just fine without any sort of issue, regardless whether you got it plugged into a monitor uh, or not. Uh, I was worried about how hot it was gonna get without a fan. It got warm, but not like worried about having children warm. If you got it on your skin, you'll notice that it's not cool, but it's not gonna fry uh, at all. So Apple did a really nice job uh, keeping the heat down. All right, so what about that keyboard? This is a really odd experience. The computer is so thin at 13.1 millimeters that Apple had to completely redo the keyboard mechanism. Uh, they made a big deal about their butterfly hinge. What that translates to is you've got no wiggle uh, at all. You can press anywhere on the key and get that same uniform click. The problem is though, it doesn't have so far to go when it does its click, so that means you have almost no throw uh, at all. It feels more like typing on an iPad than an actual keyboard. Uh, I got used to it quickly, but I would not say I enjoyed it. If you ever use the type cover on the Surface 3 or the Surface Pro 3, uh, that is a much more enjoyable experience than typing on this guy. Another new feature is the Force Touch trackpad. It doesn't actually move, instead there's a taptic engine that makes it feel like it's clicking. It works brilliantly. Uh, detecting hard presses or soft ones almost perfectly, it's an absolute pleasure to use. It's also available on the MacBook Pro, which can handle video editing and some gaming. Just saying, if you want that feature, there are other options out there, but it does work really well. It's probably my favorite features of the computer. Now, I was expecting a really tinny sound from the speakers, especially on something this small. The speakers blew me away. They sound really good. Uh, don't have any tinny noise you usually get from built-in laptop speakers. So if you just want to DJ a party without any speakers uh, plugged in, it's got to work. I actually do a pretty good job. If you want to see that review, though, put a link to it down below. I'm going to end with a score and a buy, not by recommendation. Kind of something new we haven't done before previous phones. Next, let's talk about the elephant in the room. I'm not talking about Lucy or the tomato in the room if you're a Parenthood fan. Let's talk about ports. Or should I just say port? Uh, I don't mind switching to a new standard in USB-C. I get that things have to change. 
Uh, and the port is really versatile. It lets you charge the external battery, which is a really nice feature. And it can do just about everything. I do kind of miss MagSafe, um, but I was okay using the big, ridiculously overpriced HDMI dongle. Uh, it meant when I wanted to take the computer with me, I just needed to pull one cord out and I was good to go. Well, that was great, but one port is really difficult to live with in actual use. Not everything is wireless yet. I would have liked to have at least had one USB port so I could at least charge something else built into the power brick like you've got with the Surface Pro 3. Um, it became tough. I could see it being usable, uh, but dongles on dongles on dongles. Not only gets expensive, but if you forget one, uh, you also run into a problem not being able to use whatever you need to use uh, when you're taking your device with you. So Apple introduced a new way to stack batteries. They succeeded in delivering really good battery life here uh, with the 39.7 watt hour lithium polymer pack. I got almost a nine hours advertised while using Safari. Uh, but if you're a Chrome user, be prepared for about half of that number. So get used to Safari if you want to use this when it's not plugged in. I'm not even going to touch that 480p front facing camera. I think that says enough. It's a 480p front facing camera on what as configured a $1,600 laptop. All right, so verdict, you can probably tell where I'm going with this. This thing is a Ferrari with a four cylinder engine. Uh, it's all bark and very little bite. You're clearly paying a ton of money for design uh, for its two pound body and beautiful screen, but not much else here. Uh, this computer would be a big pass. Uh, if you're looking for a computer that can do absolutely everything, one that's gonna last you a few years. A few caveats, if you're a frequent traveler and you're doing a lot of emailing, you do a lot of web browsing, and you just watch sort of 1080p video, yeah, you'll be okay. Uh, if you play the computer every year, you'll probably be okay, but if you want something that's gonna last you for years and years and years, uh, I'm gonna be hard pressed to recommend this. It also puts the MacBook Air in a really weird position. The MacBook Air is all about being thin and light, and then the MacBook comes in and uh, it's thinner and lighter, you kinda wonder, uh, where the MacBook Air now slots into the Apple's lineup. Pre-MacBook Air, there existed two lines of computers. There was a MacBook and there was a MacBook Pro. Makes me wonder if perhaps we've seen the end of that MacBook Air line. It's gonna go away and be replaced with just different versions uh, of the MacBook. Uh, my big issues with this is lack of horsepower. Uh, I probably would have appreciated maybe a little bit thicker uh, of a device with a fan and a retina screen. So pretty much an upgraded MacBook Air would have made everybody really happy. Get rid of those huge bezels, upgrade the screen, um, and I think people would have really appreciated what that had. Uh, also, an extra port or two would have been really nice. You can live with it, but just be prepared. You're going to spend a ton of money on dongles. Uh, but fun advice, there are a lot of other USB-C dongles that are not made by Apple that are way cheaper. Uh, Google sells a ton for the new Chromebook Pixel that'll save you a lot of scratch. So again, save you a couple bucks if you're spending this much money for a laptop. Um, but if I was buying this with my own money to use for a few years, uh, I would really, really think twice. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Give the video a thumbs up. We always appreciate it. Uh, until next time, I'm John Render from Techno Buffalo. See you guys next video. Bye-bye.